All right, it is Friday, July 2nd of 2021, and here we are with Sustain It TV and Freestyle Friday. I'm Chelsea, the host, because I'm always forced into this stuff, and Brandy, you're joining me here. Hey, how's it going? Hey, how are you? What you doing, Chance? Being you forced. know what? There you go. That's what I'm doing. That's right. Now, we have three topics for the day, interesting topics, and Let's just dive right in, Brandy. Why not? And everybody, if you're watching us, wherever you are, comment, type them in. Check out also our description for links to the three different articles and news pieces we're going to go through. First topic for the day, the June jobs report just came out. People are excited. The markets went nuts. Um, And, you know, I'm happy. Thank you. Now, let me tell you, Brandy. Mm-hmm. More jobs than expected. The non farm, they call it payrolls, increased by 850,000 versus the estimate for 706,000. Now, a little damper on it is the unemployment rate went up. They estimated 5.6%, but it went to 5.9%. However, on top of that, If you keep looking and digging into these numbers, what they tell you is, okay, the labor force participation rate was unchanged at 61.6%. But the separate figure they have that accounts for discouraged workers and those holding part-time jobs for economic reasons fell sharply to 9.8%. Overall, the unemployment rate, the real one they call it, is below 10% for the first time since March 2020 at 9.8, I guess is what it is. So, not bad all around. Now, all of this is available, everybody, via CNBC. But, Brandy, you want to talk about this in a different way with something you called micro-credentialing? Yeah. So, so listen, people, the cool thing... Is there a word for everything now, though? I'm sorry. There is a word for everything. You have to brand everything. (laughs) They're not certificates anymore. They're micro credentials. All right. <laughs> so the cool thing about oh oh okay, I got you. Yeah. So certifications are now considered micro credentials, and people are finding them more effective and in entering the job, entering back into the job force, or switching into an industry that they're more interested in. So a lot of times people have these these uh high these college degrees and what have you, but and spaces that they don't necessarily once they actually get into the workforce they realize we don't want to be here so they end up finding different parts of the industry that they thought they wanted to be in and then trying to figure out how do i transition i don't want to go back to school for another degree so what do i do i go and get a certification right and so during covid when everybody's in the house a lot of schools and a lot of companies, educational institutions offered up opportunities to get certifications and people have been leveraging these certifications to build up their marketability in industries that they would rather be in. Now, Corsaria is one of the first people to do that. They started this initiative. Coursera. Coursera, thank you. Coursera Mm -hmm. is um, one of the first companies. They did maybe honestly, probably about a decade ago when they started. And initially their only goal was to kind of get rid of the educational barrier and leverage all of that content that teachers from like the Ivy Leagues, uh, Ivy League schools actually taught and offer those lectures and those um, lessons up to general public. It's since evolved to now you can still take those courses for free, but you can pay a nominal fee, like less than a hundred bucks to get a certification after you take those courses and then leverage those certifications to greatly change your economic status in life. So, Mm -hmm. So, and now, especially since certain benefits are about to run out, people will have to start looking for jobs again, even though uh, some of it they're talking about when it comes to the labor force, a lot of people retired early. So the anticipation is that it's not going to really ramp up that quickly, uh, but over a few years, it'll happen. So what you're telling us is, Brandy, if you're looking for a new job, maybe get a micro credential is that what you're saying i would say that and um coursera is one of the companies you could also get them from there's a company called edx that's edx um there is uh something what is it there's oh udemy udemy actually has one then like the least formal one more tech right u-d-e-m-y that one yeah Mm -hmm. and 
Skillshare, which is another another company that offers um, these opportunities. So, just some Coursera, for- edX, for- Udemy, you said, and Skillshare. Skill- mm-hmm. Okay, cool. So that's great to know. Um, you know what I always say, Brandy, is this: wherever you are, if you have a job, make yourself indispensable. Make yourself valuable. It doesn't matter whether you're in the industry you like or not. You got a job, come in, do your work, keep your head down, be polite, things will happen. Now, second topic, talking about things happening. Some of us out here are hustling and we wanna be tipped. So this is from our team member, Renee. Mm -hmm. Uh, After we recorded last week, she was like, what is with this tipping? Why am I tipping the hairdresser? So U.S. News actually has a great little guide. It's called Tipping Etiquette, the ultimate guide to tipping. And they have it in two parts, Brandy. One part is who you should tip and how much. And the other part is who you should not. So let me talk you through this quickly. Who's going to get your tip? Number one, restaurant servers, of course. They say 15 to 20% pre-tax. That's according to Emily Post. What do you think about that? I think if the service is good, that seems like a reasonable amount of money. I yeah. am all, even like servers don't feel like you should tip if like you should have to give them a monetary tip or give them a tip with your mouth if their service can be improved. That's just how I feel. <laughs> yeah, and depending on where you are, how expensive it is, you might need to go up over twenty percent. Depends. Um, now they say for bartenders, a dollar to two dollars per drink, according to Emily Post. Alcoholic or non-alcoholic? They just say bartenders. Okay. Now, baristas, zero dollars to one dollar. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess that holds true to mocktails as well. <laughs> <laughs> they aren't really necessary, they're saying. But mm-hmm. leave your change up to a dollar for your favorite barista. Okay, I like that strategy. Yeah. You have some change left over. Leave oh. it in there if you like them. Also, the thing is, I'm going to tell you this. If you're a regular tip, you might want to tip. Yeah. They'll take care of you. They will. Um, How much to tip for a food delivery service, Brandy? 10 to 15 percent. A safe rule of thumb is 20 percent. Wow. So the challenge with that one is that especially if you're ordering through uh, like a third party, like a Seamless, a Grubhub or Uber Eats, it gets really hard to go above like 20, like go to 20 percent when they're already charging you a fee in addition to that. So I think if you are planning to tip like a delivery person, it makes more sense to just call the company directly so that you can offset most of that money to the actual delivery person versus to the third party um, company. Exactly. And even if you have like a grocery delivery service, you ain't, you're not tipping 10 to 20%. I'm sorry. That would never happen. <laughs> right. And I love all you delivery people. I do. I appreciate you, but you can forget that completely because like you're saying, Brandy, sometimes you pay already for the delivery. Yeah. So the tip is on top of that. Um, now I tip well, but you ain't getting like 20% of my grocery bill. That's crazy. That's insane. Now, yeah. <laughs> That's a bit much. <laughs> I mean, I may as well get a ham hock. (laughs) (laughs) Give me a whole turkey. For for moving, if you're moving, if you're using movers, they say four to eight dollars per hour. Hmm. I didn't even know there was a standard for that. Does that sound reasonable? Per person on the team that's moving you? They. Well, okay, let me read it. So this is uh, the website moving.com suggests approximately $40 per mover for a full day of work. Okay, 40 per mover. Okay. That's lower than I would think. That seems reasonable, really reasonable to me. Yeah. I mean, now this is, of course, on top of whatever the cost of the moving is. Yeah. Wow. Okay, movers. Uh, Hotel valet staff. A dollar to five dollars, they say. Mm-hmm. Once your car is returned to you, <laughs> uh, we mean, what do you mean? We don't, we don't tip them before they return the car. Sure. If you see Ferris Bueller, you know you better wait till you get your car back. Are you kidding me? <laughs> now, hotel concierge, five to ten dollars, they're saying. Mm-hmm. 
You don't need to pay for having questions answered, but if you ask a concierge to get you tickets or restaurant reservations, that's a good tip. $15 for hard to get tickets or even 10 to 20% of the ticket price. Mm, okay. You okay with that? Yeah, I mean, now, yeah, I am. Okay. Housekeeping at the hotel, two to $5 per day. Now, I'm going to say that depends on the country, too. Now, they do get into this, you know, check out where you are, what the customs actually are. So this is in the United States. But depending on where you are, 2 to $5 a day for some housekeeping might be a lot. Yeah. Um, now, here we go with Renee's question. Tip your hairdresser or nail technician 10 to 20%. Okay. So that's what they're saying there. That is standard. Got it. I mean, I do believe that you should tip some. Like, and you say for me, especially if you're a regular. If you're a regular, it's just I think it's it's nice you maintain a nice rapport when you just take care of them. Um, and then, and I think sometimes you sometimes you can tip. I guess twenty percent if you if you have it. <laughs> and then if you don't, you can tip whatever. And I think it balances out. And they just want a little extra. Yeah. And what I would say is if if they did a good job and you want to come back. Tip them 20%. Mm-hmm. These people pay attention. And it might even be you come one day, you need to get in quickly, you need to be, you know, fit in. Maybe you missed something. They're going to be able to, or, well, they're going to be more amenable to that. They're going to help you out. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I remember one time I was at the barbers and um, one guy kept asking for things, Brandy, asking, asking, asking. And the barber was like, okay, I'm done with you. Got him out of the seat. See, that's. You don't want to do those things. And he was a great barber. Everybody was waiting for him. Okay. He's like, I'm done with you. It was hilarious. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it was ridiculous though. He was like, can you give me this part? What about that? Like, and, and he would do it. And then he'd ask for something else. By the third one, he was like, okay, I'm done with you. I'm done with you. <laughs> Out of the seat. Yeah, it was like the soup dot seat. No soup, no soup for you. <laughs> So tipping a parking attendant a few dollars. I don't even know what that means. Now, the people who you the don't garage? have. To, I mean, a few dollars. What is a few dollars? Three dollars? Whatever you have in your pocket is what that sounds like to me. That's a dollars the seat to the guy. That is not right. The, the poor parking attendants out there, they need to earn a living. Give them a dollar. Now, yeah. Who you don't have to tip. Accountants, financial advisors, and lawyers. Are you kidding? Who's tipping them? Tipping them. They charge enough as it is. <laughs> they need to give you a rebate. Oh yeah, for real. <laughs> they need to tip you. And that's what they say here. You're likely already paying them handsomely through fees or commissions. And the whole point of their service is to save you money. Yeah. Uh, doctors and nurses. Who's tipping them? So, nurse, I will say nurses, if you have a long stay, it is a nice gesture to not necessarily tip them, but do something nice for that particular unit, like after it's all said and done. So that's one thing I would say. I don't necessarily think we should be like handing them out money, but people who take care, like <laughs> people who take care of you while you're in the hospital for an extended stay, buy this whole unit lunch. You understand? I don't know. Get them a subscription to magazines because they need something to do while, but a nice gesture, but I don't think you need to tip them. That would be my only adjustment to that. I love it. I love exactly what you said. And if you're there for a long enough time, you can figure out what they want. Heck, even ask them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> ask your favorite nurse, hey, what would be great to give all of you? You know, don't, don't worry, they'll tell you. They will. Um, now, also, don't tip mechanics, plumbers. Hmm. So, I don't know if I agree with the me- especially the mechanic because that's the relationship we're talking about and also they're saying uh, let me i'll read what they say to you yeah. in the u.s news article you're already paying the mechanic or garage and much of the money you pay goes to labor mm. okay that's their reasoning now i think a theme brandy that we're saying is though if you like these people if you're going to use their services over and over and you feel good about tipping do it they'll feel good about you I mean, the mechanic might hurt when you do it, but that's a good hurt. <laughs> now, plumbers, <laughs> I would even, I guess you will, I guess, yeah, because they maybe if they come into your home, you feel like, hey, I should tip them something. Yeah. They're saying, don't, same reasons. 
You're already paying them a good amount for their labor and expertise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think they fix that in too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, don't tip teachers and little league coaches. Who is tipping a teacher? As a teacher. Teachers. I am a teacher. <laughs> you like, teachers. I wouldn't even expect that. I'd be like, what are you giving me a tip for? I'd probably give it back, honestly. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's like yeah. the apple that people used to bring to class or something. Yeah. Well, they're saying it's common knowledge that teachers deserve to be paid more. But don't <laughs> ever give the money. <laughs> 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 oh, I see why. I see what they're saying. Because they're saying it could be an inference that you're doing that for grades. See, I am I'm in a different situation. I don't grade my students. So that's different. Yeah, I wouldn't even think in that way. Only exception though, Brandy, is when every parent is chipping in the same ten or twenty dollars and the gift is from the entire class, not just from you. Like uh-huh. a holiday present or something like that. If everybody wanted to get the teacher like a holiday bonus or something from the parents. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Okay. All right. Yeah. I like it. Now, some final notes from this article. Not every country has a culture of tipping. We have that. Being generous can pay off. That's your note, Brandy, with even better service next time. See, that's what I'm thinking about. Also, if you're in a restaurant service right now, like you want to start, like you said, a verbal tip, but you can be kind that's a way to tip people in the moment. You're getting your hair done, hair cut. They're doing the service in real time. They're serving you. Be kind, even if they mess up. Mm-hmm. Wait until they're done. Yes. Now, here it, here it goes. If the service is bad, you can skip tipping. But be careful, especially with restaurants. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it's tough. Yeah. I think in my whole life is I haven't tipped the restaurant twice, but I always mm-hmm. tell the waiter or waitress why. Like it has, you have to be egregious to be quite frank for me not to tip you. But I never just leave without telling them why because I do feel like that feedback's important for their future tipping. Look at you, and they also say it might not be your server's fault. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you have to really make sure you you know the tip. If you're not tipping, it is the server's fault. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now they say even if the service was bad, still leave a 10% tip and let management know why. Hmm. So that's one way to do it. Hmm. I like going directly to the server. Yeah. But I, I, I could, yeah. Well, it depends. It. I guess it would also depend on how bad the server was. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So that was interesting. We'll have a link to that in our description. Final thing, Pinterest is banning weight loss ads. Mm -hmm. Now, we have a link to the CBS News post about this. This is what they said uh, starting July 1st. So yesterday, they described themselves as the first major social media service to do so. And they said the new policy embraces body acceptance at a delicate time for many people as they emerge from the pandemic. So what do you think about that, Brandy? No weight loss ads. I mean, I guess ads are really persuasive to most people. So if if you're feeling bad about yourself and you are searching, because I think this article referenced that the ads would come up as a result of people searching for like healthy meals and different workouts. So when they search for that, then, you know, don't work out you know don't eat healthy just i don't know take this do this diet or take this pill or something like that so i guess ethically it could be kind of crappy for someone who's already vulnerable so i think it's a i think it's a cool decision for pinterest to kind of take a stance against against weight loss ads i'm i don't like the idea of dieting because my theory with all diets is that they all work when you're doing them but <laughs> nobody's like, but which ones can you sustain for life? And that's the, the question I always like to ask. Yeah. Even so. the Twinkie diet. It, it's effective. As long you'll, as you keep you'll lose weight. Twinkies. <laughs> Only. Yeah. 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 I, I agree with that. Um, the whole weight loss thing. Let's not even get into it. So, <laughs> but Brandy, plug yourself though. You can, you help people with this. Oh yeah, with the many hats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, we mentioned that at some point, um, that Sustainable Initiatives has a program called Entrepreneur Meal Plan. It's Entrepreneur Meal Plan is a community for 
entrepreneurs, leaders, anybody who wants to find ways to add more plants into their life. And it's studies have proven if you ingest more of a, a more whole food plant based diet, you're going to have a lower, lower weight and be more healthy. Um, that's just that's just general. I mean, some people will yeah. argue that they're larger the vegetables. I'll rebuke, you know, re- re- rebuttal. <laughs> You know, generally speaking. So if you are looking for some creative, non-judgy, non-pushy ways to add more fruits, vegetables, whole grains to your diet, creatively and fun, um, entrepreneurmealplan.com is where you can make that happen. And I'll be there to help you. You sure will. And so will the whole team. And just yeah. keep in mind, everybody, the point of having those kinds of whole plants is they fill you up on fewer calories. That's the that's the secret to weight loss if you want to do it. You cannot systematically eat less in volume. You can't. At some point your body's going to go no, it has a set amount of weight it wants of food. So if you then instead eat the same weight but fewer calories, that's how you can do it without losing your mind. So, But in addition, Brandy, we have an update for Entrepreneur Meal Plan. It'll also be executive <laughs> meal plan to come. Dropping, dropping the, what do you call it, the, the updates early. But yes. <laughs> well, it's not a weight loss ad, so I can do it. You're right. <laughs> Pinterest won't ban it. <laughs> When we, when we do an ad over there. Um, uh, yeah, so executive executive meal plan. And the whole idea of, of entrepreneur meal plan was that sustainable initiatives worked with entrepreneurs. That was our initial market. We evolved as our entrepreneur journey evolved to corporate clients. And uh, now entrepreneur meal plan is expanding to executive meal plan. So stay tuned for all kinds of cool, fun things. But most importantly, it's um, ways to build your team and around like healthy food. Yeah. So sounds great. And that takes care of today's Freestyle Friday. We'll be back every Friday, sometimes live, sometimes recorded. And you never know which three topics we're going to choose. And with that said, Brandy, thank you so much. It's always great joining you. Likewise, John. Have a good weekend. Bye. Thank you.